whole thing down if I, if I move an inch here. Uh, okay, I'm going to try to set all of this within a larger context. Uh, I want to talk, I want to pick up on the austerity theme that you brought up. Uh, and um, its origins, why austerity is the wrong thing to do, and how the whole austerity agenda is actually turning the clock back on things like social assistance transformation and reform, on things like poverty reduction in Ontario. So let's start in 2008. We had a major global economic meltdown. The uh, whole entire national economies were falling to its knees. Recession darkened uh, Canada's doors, and Ontario wasn't immune. We were, we were hit very hard by that recession. We went practically overnight from a surplus position to a deficit. Uh, and that was due to several reasons, one of which is during recessions, you end up getting a, a drop in revenues because there are fewer people and corporations paying taxes. Uh, and another thing was uh, during the height of the recession, we were like citizens the world over turning to our senior levels of governance and saying, you know what, we're really worried we're going to see a, a repeat of the Great Depression here, so um, please start a stimulus spending program to uh, create jobs and keep the bottom from falling out. So here we are several years later, and we seem to be suffering from a case of deficit amnesia. We seem to forget the reason why we found this de a deficit situation uh, in the first place. Uh, and we've spent the past year being held hostage to this deficit. We have a government that has been waging an austerity bubble, and it's, it set its sights first on the public sector, uh, starting with teachers and school support workers, uh, and it is warned that it's going to look at other aspe aspects of um, the public sector in 2013 as well. And so you might ask yourself, well, why would they want to go after public sector workers? I mean, they're a vital part of Ontario's middle class, uh, public sector workers. They're, they're the working families that politicians like to appeal to during election time. Uh, public sector workers deliver the public services that we all need and cherish from public health care to social assistance provision, uh, education. Um, and the government will say, you know, we don't, we don't really want to do this austerity thing, but we have to because of, we have this deficit, so we've got to get rid of the deficit. Uh, and in reality, they were egged on over a year ago by a former bank economist Don Drummond who uh, made some projections, and he came up with this long list of recommendations. And uh, Don Drummond said, hey, if you don't do all of these measures, and that amounted to a major austerity agenda, actually, the, um, the provincial debt deficit will be, by the year 2017, we'll have a $30 billion deficit. Now, $30 billion is a pretty scary number, right? Unfortunately, it's based on really questionable uh, assumptions and projections. Uh, I, I work at a think tank um, with a team of crackerjack economists, and our economist Hugh McKenzie has gone over all of Don Drummond's uh, deficit projections and the assumptions that fed into it. And when Hugh looks at the numbers, he says, you know, it, it's actually not going to be about $30 billion deficit by 2017. It's going to be closer to a $6 billion deficit. So really, a lot of this is really unnecessary. Um, you know, we don't really have to go into full austerity mode here. So, uh, you know, so there's that going on. And the other thing is, we have this problem in Ontario where we began an austerity agenda before the province had fully recovered. So during a recession, you lose some jobs, and we had not regained all of those jobs before they started the austerity agenda. Um, and before they stopped the stimulus spending that had been uh, beginning to course through. So austerity isn't helping with job recovery, which is what we need right now in Ontario. And then there's Ontario's little revenue problem. Uh, in the late 1990s, uh, Ontario adopted a very aggressive tax cut agenda, and our economist, Hugh McKenzie, estimates that we've lost a cumulative of about $17 million a year to this tax cut agenda in terms of lost fiscal revenues coming into public coffers. And he says that's about the size of the cost of um, the Ontario and elementary school system combined. So, you know, think, think about that. Think about the cost of this very 
expensive tax cut agenda, and for what? Uh, and you know, to, to go after teachers and start a war with teachers, to turn the clock back on social assistance transformation, um, to put the pause button on the province's commitment to reduce child poverty by 25% uh, within a five year period. In the meantime, you have a provincial auditor who's looked at the books and noticed that Ontario's corporations owe about $1.4 in unpaid taxes and that the province was really quite ready to write it off and just go, well, I guess they're not going to pay those taxes. And so I think it's all pointing to uh, you know, what, what we value as a society um, and the beginning of what Hugh McKenzie calls the need for an adult conversation about taxes in this province and in this country. Because uh, in Canada, median income households benefit from about $41,000 a year in public services. $41,000 that we have to pull out of our own pockets if they were taken away. So we have a lot to lose from this. There's an environmentalist poll that asks Canadians, um, what makes you feel like a good citizen? And the number one answer that they gave was, uh, I volunteer, and that makes me feel like a good citizen. The number two answer was acts of kindness. I'm a good person, kind to others, that makes me feel like a good citizen. The number three answer, I pay taxes. I actually think that there's a conversation to be had with each other about the role of taxation in terms of the kind of society we want to live in and what the public services that those taxes actually pay for and provide for us, that quality of life. So I would far prefer to see us start that conversation rather than to stay in this austerity mode because the austerity mode is very divisive. It pits people against each other. It's pitting the public sector against the private sector. It's pitting unionized workers against non-unionized workers, young people against old people. It's very toxic, divisive, um, and you know, in some instances it's just getting pretty mean and nasty out there. And it also diverts us from the problems that austerity isn't fixing, like a weak job market, job market, like the need to honor the commitment to reduce poverty by the end of next year by a 25% reduction like implementing social assistance reform that's truly transformative uh, and, um, and like talking about responsible taxation. So I want to end with, um, with one little thing. Every year, um, Merriam-Webster Dictionary, they have an online version of the dictionary. Every year, they report what the most searched term on their online dictionary was. Uh, and in 2010, the most searched term was the word austerity which kind of makes sense when you think about everyone was just recovering from recession in 2010 and, uh, and there were all these um, banks and, and investors who were urging governments to start adopting austerity agendas. So I guess more people turned to the dictionary to see what that meant. In 2011, the most searched term was pragmatism. Uh, and I can only guess that after a year of listening to extreme austerity and seeing riots in the streets in Greece and elsewhere, that people started thinking, well, what's the pragmatic thing to do? And they looked that word up. You want to know what the 2012 most searched term was? It was a tie. It was a tie between capitalism and socialism. Yeah. I think something is slowly but surely shifting in our society. I think we are getting ready to have a conversation that we've been avoiding for a very, very long time. So when Peter says that he hopes I'm going to talk about post-austerity vision, I actually would um, encourage you in your discussions today to think about all of the details that you've heard here today about what the problems with the, the social assistance review, um, uh, it, what, it, what it entails in that, what's entailed in that, what could be, and to think about what's the image, what, what would your term be for 2013? What kind of Ontario do we want to live in? And what could a world post-austerity look like? Thank you.